Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Dave Neal here, stand-up comedian, host of Bachelorette Recap, a guy's review. We're talking about Colton Underwood. We're talking about Cassie Randolph. We're talking about the news that happened this week. As you guys know, for one reason or another, I have become the, uh, I guess, voice of reason in this whole mess of a story. We've got a uh, domestic quarrel. We've got uh, stalking, uh, harassing text messages. Uh, it, it really belongs in a soap opera. If you wrote this in a screenplay, I'd say, can you make it more realistic? This is ridiculous. Uh, so so uh, I don't know if this will be the nail in the coffin, but uh, we're getting toward the end of the road with this story. Um, as we know, a couple days ago, today is, uh, what, Thursday, November something or another, 5th. Uh, we got an election in the midst. It looks like Biden's going to pull away with it. And um, and uh, you know what? The, the pundits, you know, they can talk about the election. I'm more of a relationship guy myself, uh, certified codependent, uh, engaged. Uh, trying to make things work, trying not to cry watching Adam Sandler films. It ain't easy. Uh, if you never watched the live stream before, I'm new to it. I've been doing it for a few weeks, but I do, I've do. i been doing Bachelor Recaps for about five, six years now. So I'm, a, I'm, I'm a sort of versed in the universe. I try not to get overly obsessed in the gossip or drama of the show. But when I heard about this Colton Underwood scenario... Um, I really couldn't not talk about it because it crossed the line of drama and more into the safety of our, of our uh, sisters, mothers, and friends that are out there. Of course, there's a glaring issue within society when it comes to toxic love, purity culture. You know, the U.S. has got this weird Bible belt um, sort of, of, I don't want to bash Christians, a raised Catholic. Hey, folks, uh, confirmation. Uh, but um, we've got an issue with the way we address uh, relationships, uh, thinking of them as property, and... and uh, Anyway, so we've been talking about that. Uh, Cassie Randolph filed a 30-day uh, temporary restraining order after finding out that her ex-boyfriend, uh, Colton Underwood, uh, who has, she had just broken up with, uh, had put a tracking device under the trunk of her car. Cassie's brother found it, and um, we're talking about this now because after they were supposed to go to court tomorrow, November 6th, there was a, um, a they, she dropped the charges. So let's, uh, let's talk about it in today's rundown. As you see here, I have Cassie Drops Charges, possible reasons why. Talk a little bit about celebrity privilege. Um, I don't know why, but celebrity privilege came to mind when it came to Colton getting off scot-free. And then we'll get into a few voicemails. Um, call in now if you want to leave a voicemail, 401-213-9828. Let me know. Um, and we're going to get right into it. Uh, this uh, stream was a little bit delayed thanks to Spectrum Internet, uh, some buffering issues. So if you're uh, watching this with some issues, uh, we're trying to address it. But um, apparently it's all over the country right now. The whole country, everyone's streaming election stuff. There's a lot of bandwidth happening out there. The grid is uh, teetering. We're supposed to be a first world country. We don't know what's going on out there. Nevada's counting their ballots one at a time. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Can we get some re results? Um, Jenny asked if there's a show tonight. There is a show tonight. There's a, a show, I believe it's two hours tonight, week four of The Bachelorette. I will be doing my recap tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. You'll be uh, receiving it 8 a.m. Pacific time, which means it's going to be a long night for me tonight. And then at 11 a.m. tomorrow, hopefully we solve this bandwidth issue. We will be doing, I say we, me, I will be doing a live stream tomorrow. So it's going to be a busy day tomorrow. Thank you guys so much for tuning in with me today. Anyway, folks, so... Cassie drops the charges. What do you guys think? Let me know. Most people, let me pull up this window here. Uh, most people, it looked like, were pretty happy uh, that, well, I shouldn't say happy. They were, they were kind of frustrated, right? There's a lot of people, I'll read some comments that were frustrated that they didn't get to see sort of um, a, a, a finish line with this drama. They wanted Colton to go to court. They wanted him to speak for what he had been accused of doing, and that just didn't happen. Um... People have thought maybe she got a settlement check. Um, let's read a few of the comments that people left, and we'll take that as a jumping off point. Um, I wrote that. Is it weird I wanted this to go to court? Wanting so, oh, I wanted some uh, explaining to be done. Looks like that won't happen. Hope Ca Cassie feels safe. That's the most important thing when it comes to the victims is we hope that they feel safe. Uh, but there is a greater picture. Now, Cassie, we, you know, whatever we want isn't important. She's allowed to decide to press charges. She's allowed to decide to drop them and all that. But uh, when it comes to the greater picture, the conversation must continue that uh, domestic violence happens, uh, restraining orders, people get intimidated, people drop them for various reasons. I actually had this posting right here, five reasons that people 
dropped their restraining orders. Uh, it looked like one of them might have applied to Cassie. So we have um, Huffington Post, five reasons victims drop restraining orders, even though domestic violence is present. Now, of course, domestic violence wasn't present as we know it, just um, stalking, intimidation, and harassment. Uh, there was no physical violence, I should put, that we know of. Um, number one, reconciliation. People just get back together. They file a restraining order and they get back together. Children are, children's a big one. There's no ch children in this case. Uh, lack of support. That couldn't be it. Looks like Cassie has tons of support. We can't know for sure, but it looks like she's got a good family and people supporting her. Legal delays and then victim blaming and a lack of accountability. Now, this fifth one's interesting. It is rare for the strained party to take accountability for their actions. Instead, the abuse is denied and the blame is shifted to the victim. You did this to me by filing the restraining order. You are tearing our family apart. I've got nowhere else to go. I'm homeless because of you. I'm going to lose my job because of this. Ab abuse is never the victim's fault. Here's what's important. That's the last statement. Abuse is never the victim's fault. So there is a myriad of reasons why Cassie may have dropped the restraining order. Colton runs a charity. You know, if she, if she goes through with the restraining order, gets him arrested, he actually won't be able to help others. Again, I'm not saying this is right, but these are thoughts that may or may not be going through her head. She might get a phone call from Colton's parents. They dated long enough. You have to assume each uh, Colton and Cassie are, 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 you know, know each other's parents. Colton, you know, was nursed back to health after he had coronavirus. I don't know if that's true or not, but, I'm, but you know, he had coronavirus when they were breaking up. And, um... You got to think if you get a phone call from someone you're trying to file a restraining order against from their, their mom who sees them as some beautiful, perfect child, there's that thought that's like, well, you know, maybe I'll just drop it. Maybe I'm causing too many problems. And, and, and that could potentially be what Cassie thought. Now, I heard something interesting. Someone left a comment earlier today that they thought, what if the Bachelor franchise decided to pay Cassie to put this away? Now, money... A lot of times these things are solved by money because it's like, look, and it doesn't mean the victim goes into this looking for money, but you go, what, am I going to get my name dragged through the mud, spent so much money in court fees, this and that, they're offering money just for this to go away. It could have very well been that The Bachelor didn't want this to be in the news any longer. They want the focus to be on the show. And they said, here's 50 grand. You guys go to mediation, decide to stay away from each other for the next three years. The Bachelor acts like the dad telling each other to knock it off. And who knows? I mean, but that's very common because within the court system, it's so hard to... Um, to, to get a right answer when everything goes to court because you're airing out dirty laundry, text messages, voicemails, uh, evidence. You know, Cassie becomes part of this uh, criminal investigation. So she decided she wasn't going to press charges, uh, even though, and, and I was actually on a hike with a friend of mine who is a, um, a lawyer and he works for a corporation and they do domestic, they do um, uh, restraining orders in the workplace. So very similar situations. And it's like, look, he said, sometimes for, for so many reasons, these things don't want to go to court. You don't want to, sometimes you, you know, you sometimes like put it this way, Cassie might want to, she wants to feel safe. She wants to know Colton's uh, over a hundred yards away. She wants to know he's not showing up in her alley at 3 a.m., harassing her friends, her family. But at the same time, maybe she doesn't want him to have a criminal record. You know, you can want several different things. We're all very complicated, right? You can want to feel safe, but also empathize with somebody else. Um, so let's read a few of your comments and see what you guys think. Uh, D D uh, Diane said, doesn't seem like Cassie investigated the control aspect of domestic violence. My first question is, what has Colton done to bring about a change in his actions? Nothing. Then why expect anything new? Diane, that's a good point. You know, that's a good point. Has he proven, you know, that he's going to change his ways? We don't know that for sure. Maybe. Priscilla said, many of my clients who are victims of abuse do not choose to move forward to keep the peace. What I find interesting is demissed with prejudice. Jessica said, looking back at the season, I wonder if he was a red flag to her from the beginning. He basically had to beg her to date him. She seemed ready to leave the show. And then Misha said, that's a very valid point about his charity. Um, external family members do get involved a lot. And that's got to be tough because it's one thing to like have an issue with somebody. It's another when their whole family's like trying to root for you to make a different decision. It's, it's in, in, and then in this scenario, you throw gasoline on the fire because it's way, it's way bigger uh, than then the issue at hand, it's way bigger than just uh, wanting someone to stay away from you. It's, it's on TMZ. It's this and that. My, my, uh, my interest with, uh, let's, let, me, let me cut this over to uh, the other, this other window that I had. My interest with, um, with the, how Colton released the info is kind of, this is where it starts to annoy me. Colton said, because he kind of took the blame away from him. 
He said, today, Colton asked the court to dismiss the temporary restraining order against me. Yeah, that's true. Like, sure. But I'm sure Cassie wasn't, um, you know, was it her idea? You know, it's very much like uh, controlling the narrative here happening with Colton. Today, Cassie asked the court to dismiss the restraining order. Did you beg her to do that? Did your whole family ask her? Was there money involved? Like, these are the things that we'll just never know. He said the two of us were able to reach a private agreement to any to address any of Cassie's concerns. Again, it seems very much like he's skirting around any ownership to address Cassie's concerns. Oh, you know, we reached, you know, we talked a lot just to make, you know, sure Cassie's concerns were all right that I was, uh, you know, stalking her, that I was in her alleyway at 3 a.m., that I was texting her best friends from an unknown number. You know, it kind of sounds like, oh. It's one of those things like when you apologize, you ever apologize to your lady and you're like, look, I'm sorry if you were offended. And she's like, oh, you're sorry if I'm offended. It's like, all right, you got to own up better than that. You got to say more than I'm sorry if you're offended. I'm sorry that I offended you. X, Y, and Z. You have to give examples, right, folks? Oh, I don't know too much about relationships, but men, we got to learn how to apologize. Colton, you're young. Call me up. 401. Let me know. You got to learn how to apologize, bro. This has got so much PR uh, sort of PR, you know, public relations smeared all over it that he releases that, you know, he releases this, uh, announcement on the, uh, the biggest, uh, political news day of, uh, of the universe. Clearly I can't even get bandwidth here. This is basically a audio only podcast because I'm buffering so much because of these issues. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, the world's bandwidth is all going towards this election and he decides to throw out, um, the results of a court store, you know, and you can't blame him for it. That that's the game that they play. You know, so, um, so anyway, so, uh, we see over here, let me go to this next one. Colton deleted all of the photos on his Instagram. We all saw that 2 million followers, no photos. He just decided either he's going to start new. Maybe he didn't want to completely go off the grid. So he just, uh, got rid of all of his photos and he's going to start fresh. Maybe he's going to go to rehab. Maybe this is part of the process. Wouldn't it be a bad idea, Colton. Nothing bad can come from you going to rehab and learning about your own toxic behaviors. We all we all are forced to sort of reconcile with what we're what what we're uh, you know what's possible within our hearts. What's you know like I said in the last video, we're all sort of um, <clears throat> let me close this. We're all able to commit uh, aspects of we're all able to hurt others, even though we want love. Like no one's doubting that Colton didn't want love here. It's just when you start controlling other people, you put others in danger to uh, to feel the wrath of your love. Jenny said Cassie was never in love with Colton. Uh, Davy's posture of death. I don't know what that means. Um, <laughs> is that when I lean on this? You call it my posture of death. Um, Sheila said that's definitely an interesting point that the Bachelor franchise could have influenced the decision. Jessica said, I don't think he will change. He's going to keep pursuing her. I think her dropping the charges will affect her with double jeopardy. If he does this again, could he be accused of it again? Uh, Jessica, good question. As far as I see it, um, she can't file a restraining, or a restraining order against him again using the um using the previous uh pieces of evidence but if he shows up at 4 a.m un un uh, uninvited if he starts to uh, you know obviously a tracking device again or violates whatever their private agreement is she can get a restraining order again so there isn't double jeopardy in that sense there's just all right i will no longer pursue a restraining order and again don't take that don't take this as legal advice i'm just i just think it's common sense he doesn't have carte blanche that he can run around like crazy uh, it's just um, what they did was they kind of admitted from now on, uh, we're not going to pursue anything that's happened in the past. Clean slate. Uh, and that might be the best case scenario for both of them. It might not be the best case for victims in the future, but you you can't always, uh, like Cassie doesn't owe it to anyone else to be a martyr for uh, victims uh, of domestic violence. That's just how it works, you know? That's a good water I got there. Chelsea said, my favorite part of his statement is that he respects everyone respecting his privacy in this matter. Oh, Colton, I'm tracking you, baby. We're tracking your privacy right now. Uh, we're all over you, buddy. Look, I understand, I understand the idea of wanting, um, I understand the idea of wanting privacy in this matter, but you're now at a place where um, you can't rightfully expect that. Uh, you've, and I hate to say you've asked for this, Colton. But uh, the idea of us o- uh, overanalyzing your every move is in response to you violating the basic trust that we have in each other, 
when it comes to human rights, not tracking them, not showing up at 3 a.m. None of your boys would have approved of this, Colton. No one on the show would have approved of this. None of your ex-girlfriends, your dad, nobody would have approved of this. And now it's more about you uh, showing some form of reconciliation with your actions. So uh, be less worried about the privacy you are not necessarily entitled to and be more worried about positive change. And I'll be the first... I think I made it clear. I'll be the first to to give credit where it's due. I've listened to some of Col- uh, Colton's interviews on podcasts, and it's like, look, I I don't believe he's a bad guy. I I think in a lot of cases, short of psychopathic rage, I think in, short, in a lot of cases you can see that people make bad decisions, even though they meant well. And um, it doesn't mean we necessarily forgive them, but it means we we you know we 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 talk about it with the humility of knowing we're all capable of. Uh, going into the depths of our our self sabotaging soul, we're all capable of toxic behavior, and it's what we do next that's important. You know, God knows it's a good thing that this didn't go any farther. This might be the best thing that ever happens to him. Jessica said, "Not to say he didn't do a wrong, but I think he's young and will learn his lesson." Again, Jessica, exactly what I'm saying. No apologies. I'm not apologizing for him, but I agree with him. Jessica said, unpopular opinion. I think he will change and learn his lesson. They're just so young. A social experiment show like this is toxic for young people if this is their first real experience of dating. I agree. Very toxic scenario for young people. Very toxic. And um, I would say I think the only thing, um, let me uh, enlarge in this right here. The uh, only thing that we can hope for in this whole in this whole scenario is that there's growth, that there's a lot of just like learning uh, how to be better. And with that comes just talking about it. That comes talking about it. So I'm worried about the idea of him uh, closing off his Instagram. I think the best thing he can do, like any addict when they go to a 12-step program, hi, my name's Colton Underwood. I'm a love addict. I'm codependent. Whatever, Whatever term you want to start off with, I'm, I'm guilty of, you know, jealous, toxic rage. I let my emotions get the best of me. Um, I have this darkness within my mind that doesn't think I'm good enough. I mean, we saw all this on the show. This isn't stuff that the Bachelor necessarily need, needed um, much effort to edit together. I mean, there's this I'm not good enough aspect that um, unfortunately uh, probably will be with him for the rest of his life. I'll always be addicted to cookies. I'll always um, be codependent and uh, care too much about what other people think. And I'll try my best to, on a daily basis, you know, rid myself of that feeling. But it's a um, practice. It's a practice to be sober-minded uh, with whatever it is that, um, that your addiction is. So I'm not here to diagnose what uh, Colton's addiction is, but I think we've all got an aspect of us that uh, sees a dark side. We have all got an aspect of us that um, we wish was uh, more blissful. And, um, and that's part of living life is to get to a place where we don't control the world around us. We control how we react to it. Colton did a bad job. He failed at controlling how he reacted to being broken up with. He tried to bench press his way out of it. And when you try to bench press your way out of situations that you can't bench press your way out of, you, you don't get to win that. This isn't as easy as a football team cutting you so you work harder and train again. She said no, and that just wasn't in the lexicon. No wasn't in the vocabulary. And now he has to understand that it is. And you have to, and you have to acknowledge that and realize there's better solutions than tracking somebody. Um, uh, team World says, this tells something about how the franchise cast people. Yeah, of course. But also, but also, like to stick with what Jessica said earlier, it's not just that these are random people. You, we're putting a generation under the microscope that has tools to stalk, track, obsess, right? I mean, I hate to f- sound old, born in 85, okay? So, like, I had to get that number, and before social media, you didn't know where that person was. You trusted them. Yeah, I'm at my dad's for the weekend. Oh, cool. I couldn't go on their Snapchat and geo-search them or see what photos they were tagged in. There's so many games being played because of the internet. We used to just trust people. You know, you text them, they'd get back to you the next day. Now you text somebody, it says read. Oh, they read it? But they didn't respond? And you, start, and you create this world. And you, you shine this mirror, this reflection onto the ugly side of you. So 
I don't think it's necessarily who they're casting so much as that um, people in today's uh, in today's world are just um, living a toxic form of life with this addiction in the pocket, the cell phone. Obviously, he took it uh, to the next level with a tracking device. But like I said, I mean, it's not much different. And I'm not making excuses for a tracking device. It's illegal. Um, but it's not much different than somebody as obsessively checking their alerts on their phone to see when their ex uh, tags uh, posts a photo to see if they're with their, uh, their new guy or whatever. You know what I mean? That's just as crazy, too, even if it's legal. It's voyeurism. Social media voyeurism. Uh, Kirsten, what's happening? I'm hoping this was enough for him to see he needs to change his ways. That's right. Hey, Lynn, Lynn's here. I got your postcard on the way. Boy, Lynn, there's a reason I didn't send these postcards yet um, because of, as you see what's happening, I got the postcards right here. I'm going to send them out end of week, but I'm trying to, I'm trying, not that this is going to make much of a difference, but the U.S. postal system's a mess right now, folks. I mean, we're trying to, you know, we're trying to get uh, some of these ballots mailed to people by the end of the week. It's a whole problem. As you know, this uh, whole stream's buffering. I'm going to take the stream down when it's over and re-upload because I think I'm saving a high-quality version myself. So I'll at least be able to re-upload a better version tomorrow. But I do appreciate you guys contributing to this, even though we're having some technical difficulties. Priscilla said, Homie has a right to feel his feelings, but not let his feelings dictate external actions. Priscilla, that's so great. Now, you're a lawyer, right? I know uh, are you, you're involved. You've been giving me some good legal tips here, right? Uh, let me know what your, um, what your law sort of specialty is, Priscilla. But you're right. It's never about telling people not to feel a certain way. Man up. Don't cry. Nah, that ain't it. That ain't it. Feel your feelings. The surprising thing with Colton is it's like you're an athlete, bro. You, you should know what it's like to go out there, work hard on the field, get a good workout in, dopamine rush, and feel better the next day. Most athletes are, I mean, everyone's got their own toxic problems. I can't blanket all athletes together. But when, you, when you're the type who works out, you know how to burn off that negative energy. You know how to feel that high. I wonder if the coronavirus, the pandemic, strips you away from your friends, your workout group, you're no longer on a football team. Did this take away that safety net that he had built, that, 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 um, that exercise meditation, you know? Find a new way to do it. Yoga. I don't know. Garrett's doing yoga. Go <laughs> see what Garrett's new girl's doing. She'll get you in Shavasana. Um, Whitney said, if he's not getting help, then he'll do it. Again, tigers don't lose their stripes if it goes that far and deep. That's right, Whitney. It's all about enlightenment. If you don't solve the problem, the world will create the same problem for you over and over and over again. Figure out the root cause. Don't put a Band-Aid on it. Fix it on the inside. That's all you can do. Um, Oz is here. He joined a bit late. Sorry, Oz. We got buffering issues, but I hope uh, I hope you stick with me here. Um, oh, boy. This is not looking good. There it is. All right. So, uh, Oz, I'm actually going to play your voicemail here. Um, do, 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 do. I got a couple voicemails. Let's get right into it. We're going to go. I'll go like another 15 minutes or so, but I know we've got some tech difficulties, so I'll hopefully have these fixed by tomorrow. I really apologize. I go nuts, folks. This annoys me so much because I spent a lot of time prepping everything, hit the button, and then it got lag issues. We just fixed the audio. I don't want to complain to you guys anymore, but this annoys me so much. All right, so here's our first voicemail. Hi, Dave. It's Oz from Vancouver. I'm just wondering why, why Cassie would drop the lawsuit. What, what, what's the reasoning behind it? It doesn't make much sense that, that you let him up look like that. So just wanted to hear your thoughts. Okay, bye. Love you, Oz. Look, like we've been saying, I don't think we're ever going to know. I don't think we're ever going to have an answer as to why she truly dropped it. I'm sure it's multiple reasons. Uh, but I tell you this, and, and we'll talk about this more, I, I feel a little skeptical about the way Colton released his statement. I feel skeptical that, uh, you know, he's like, like he said she had every right to do that. That was good PR. But I still don't know if I feel like he's going to be able to express himself in a way where he really sees the gravity of what he did. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I mean, you kind of took that away from Cassie. It might sound crazy to say, but if she's losing sleep at night, if she hears the, the wind rattling her window and she wonders if someone's in the alley, if she th feels that someone's looking at her from over her shoulder, you can't buy that level of like uh, real estate in someone's head. All right, here's our next voicemail. Hi, Dave. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm so excited. I finally made it to your live. Um, I just wanted to make 
a comment about Cassie dropping the charges. I think that what she's doing is really a kind gesture towards her ex, Colton. She definitely did not have to drop those charges. But I think doing so shows her compassion for him and shows that she really does want him to have a good life and um, let people have these positive thoughts on him still because this shows that they were able to solve their problems amicably and it didn't have to be a terrible ordeal brought throughout court. And maybe one day they can be okay with each other. I'm not sure if um, at this point they can be friends because that's a really hard honest line to cross but it, it shows an amicable respect for each other oh yeah i'm from san diego california and my name's nikki if i forgot to say that okay thank you thank, bye thank you so much nikki that was such a nice voicemail nikki i appreciate it oz i appreciate it oz is up there in canada nikki's in san diego hey nikki it might uh snow this weekend isn't that crazy it's 95 degrees outside and it's going to get down to the 50s and it's going to snow in the mountains this weekend so that'll be exciting but um thank you so much for your call uh i appreciate you getting to the live i do apologize again i'll try to stop apologizing this is my codependency right here but i really am sorry it's buffering so bad yeah like just just uh, treat it like a <laughs> treat this like a podcast, close your eyes and meditate and just expect that I'm uh, actually not buffering. But um, uh, yeah, look, it's, it takes a ton of empathy and compassion for her to see this scenario in a way where she wants them to, she wants him to feel good moving forward and not have this sort of retribution for past mistakes. It's shocking. It's actually not shocking to me, but there are a lot, like a lot of people that have looked at this and I've seen this in different comments that say, oh, this shows that Cassie didn't have anything to charge him on. You're missing the point here. She didn't have to charge him. Um, a lot of times from what I've been told, trying very much to balance, you know, walk on this balance beam here of respect because I don't know what it's like. I, I haven't put myself in the shoes of someone who has been stalked, catcalled, uh, harassed. It just doesn't happen in this direction, folks. Unfortunately, it's really a one-way street. Uh, don't get me wrong. There are, there are such scenarios. It's just far and few between where guys actually know what this feels like. Anyway, so I'm just careful with my words there because uh, someone always responds, get on out. Okay, I get it. I know. But uh, my point is, is that it's... um. You know, she 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 was well within her right to pursue this farther legally. What probably happened after him jumping over a wall and pursuing her and showing up in alleyways and contacting her friends, she probably said, he's not getting the dang hint. He ain't getting the hint. And if he's not getting the hint, what's going to give him the hint? Well, you hate to do it, but there's really no no middle ground between what she did. Like she what other options did she have? Sure, she had people talk to him. She's, you know, it was messy. I mean, we all know. We all know what happened. The guy's creating fake phone numbers and texting them at 3 a.m. You, you need help. You need help. And, and Cassie did the right thing by understanding she couldn't be the solution. Too many times with breakups, relationships, uh, issues co with codependency, toxic love, addiction, too many times the person who broke up feels guilty for what they did. You got a relationship, the person might kill themselves, they're cutting themselves, they're speeding on the road, they're reckless, they're not eating right, and you feel bad for them. It's someone you love or loved. But at the same time, any effort to help them is just going to draw you closer to them. So this is where this is where it's important if you're in Colton's shoes to have a good support system that's not Cassie. So many people mentioned, hey, look, why are they even talking? They should have never been talking after they broke up. And that's the big thing. People say, oh, we want to stay friends, this and that. That's all malarkey. If you ask me, you need to go no contact. You need to leave them alone. You need to live your life. And if that means you block each other on Instagram, then you have to set yourself up. Like, look, I'm trying to quit sweets, right? Well, look, if someone's going to offer me a cookie on the, you know, outside, I might say yes, but it helps my cause if I don't just buy cookies and keep them in the fridge. You know what I mean? So like, it's, it's all about setting up sort of boundaries and standards that you can control around you. And by having the phone in your pocket with the social media and the tracking, it's just, it's no surprise to me that it would ever get so far as a tracking device. No surprise to me. All right, let's uh, take a few more comments and then I'll let you guys go. Um... So Priscilla said that she, let me go backwards, Priscilla. I know I missed you. Hey, Jen Murphy made it. How are you? Um, 
Priscilla said it makes sense when you makes sense when you care about someone genuinely. Often in cases with children, I hear I can't do this to the father, mother of my kids. You love them. Yeah, Priscilla, that's exactly what, like what I was talking about when it comes to the reasons why people drop their restraining order, children and other family members. So Priscilla said she uh, focuses in uh, domestic violence actions in uh, CA. Is that California or Canada? I think it's California, right? Family para, uh, family law paralegal. Well, we appreciate you so much, Priscilla, for shining um some light on this and with your education because honestly, I'm just a I'm just a dude, man, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm reading about misdemeanors and penal codes and I'm over my head. So I'm just here to talk. I'm not here to offer any expert opinions or advice, but I think talking is an important part, right? It's an important part just to have this conversation and realize no one wants this. No one wants anyone to go through this. Um, Anyway, uh, let's see any other new comments before we let you go. Uh, Jessica said, I definitely think they used to go on not for fame, but for the last decade, everyone just wants to get Instagram famous. They should cast people who are off the grid. Hey, I understand, Jessica. I absolutely understand. You know, they it used to be like you wouldn't follow someone on Instagram. You'd watch their show. They'd be named Rebecca, and you wouldn't know their last name. And now it's kind of like as soon as someone's cast, we look through their Instagram photos. We see what photos Garrett liked in this and that. It's a whole mess. It's a whole mess. It used to be about love. Now... And this is why I think the Bachelor franchise has actually stayed relevant over the years is because normally a show kind of dips in popularity, but what we have is this obsessiveness with social media culture. So while, while the show kind of would normally have run its course, you, you follow these people in their real lives and it becomes so much more of an interactive show. I mean, we're here talking about it right now, you know? Um, Jessica said, cast people off the grid so they don't all meet at Stagecoach before even going on. Come on, Bachelor producers. Yeah, the Bachelor producers are pretty lazy. I mean, let's be honest. They're not going to some malls in Columbus, Ohio to find people. I mean, they have some random casting calls, but it's really a word of mouth thing. It's about like uh, leveraging popularity. If you're friends with Tyler Cameron, you're going, you're going on the next season. That's just how it works because they know they're going to get that group of people to watch. Yeah, remember when it used to be there's some Bachelor, some random person? Now it's like, all right, you know, so-and-so's previous season. Season. The whole family tree is so incestuous, you know, and there's a couple of relationships that happen because of it. But for the most part, I don't think Bachelor, with all that they do to create a world that people fall in love, I don't think their success rates any higher than just some random Joe Blow off the street. Um, Oz said that the Chris Harrison Bachelor might go late tonight. Yeah, well, my question about this, folks, is I'm, I'm watching it on the West Coast, but um, if there's any sort of... Uh, presidential election news, they're probably going to overtake the Bachelor feed. So we might not have some of the Bachelor showing. But I want to let you guys know, before I get out of here, I appreciate you guys sticking with me through some of this some of this BS here. Um, I know we got 65 people in the chat room. Bunch of thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. I want to get to 7,000 this week. I think I'm going to get to 7,000 subscribers tomorrow. Uh, like I said, again... This issue, I'm, I'm not taking full blame for this uh, lagging issue. My internet was down all morning. I thought it was fine. Clearly, Spectrum has a problem happening. It's all over the country right now. All the bandwidth is uh, everyone's, everyone's online trying to watch uh, president, president election stuff. So anyway, that uh, I guess takes more of um, precedence over my content. But uh, anyway, folks. Um, I appreciate all of you. Hit the subscribe button if you, ha- if you haven't already. I look at the analytics. About 85% of people that watch my content aren't subscribed. I know most of you guys are uh, because you're watching the live stream. You guys are like my most loyal people. But um, I appreciate all of you. And, um, you know, it's so annoying, you know, to, to crack a little bit behind the, the scenes of the analytics. I know sometimes you guys like to hear the analytics. The two videos I posted uh, to start this week, the week four precap and the um, podcast, they got demonetized right away. I don't, and so they got demonetized for two days. I posted them on Monday, right? Today's Thursday, so three days. And then today they got remonetized, but after they had like something like 50 or 60,000 watch minutes. So they, so that's what YouTube's way of taking like 200 bucks out of my pocket for no reason. They're monetized now. So anyways, I appreciate you guys sticking around. There's nothing you guys can do to help that, but, um, uh, I got some really nice donations this week too. I'm going to shout them out on the recap tonight or tomorrow morning when you see it. I'll shout out some of those donations I got. I mean, real charitable people. Someone gave me $25 in, uh, to, to buy more Diet Cokes. And it's funny because I actually went to the supermarket last night and they didn't have Diet Cokes and I was so annoyed because I was like, I wanted these. I've got a problem. Um, okay, a couple more comments and I'm out of here. Um, Priscilla just picked up a new domestic violence case today. Priscilla, let me ask you this before I go. Are you able to disassociate from the feelings of, well, how do I want to ask this question, Priscilla? How do you, how do you not bring work home with you? 
when you have a tough case. How do you how do you overcome when may, maybe you have a client that um, that doesn't want to that wants to drop a, a, a you know a restraining order and they really shouldn't because the their ex is still in their life and violent and so many people suffer from toxic love addiction that even sometimes the victim won't take the necessary um, the nexus, necessary measures to leave you know, the, to leave the relationship. Like in this case, Cassie wanted to leave, but in so many cases, so many victims end up staying with their, um, the perpetrator for, for whatever reasons, whether it's, you know, probably a lot of times due to money, a lot of times they might not be the breadwinner of the family. So there's control and manipulation. I mean, how do you, how do you not take that home with you? Or do you? I've always said it's, it must be interesting to work in law because on one end you, you can decide to like be stoic and, not worry about it and just go home and not think about it. But on the other hand, you want to be a compassionate person. Like I, I, I'm happy. I like being empathetic towards other people's problems, but I don't want to be so bogged down, bogged down on it on my own that like, I'm just like some stone cold, like, uh, you know, don't care. So let me know. Let me know about that. Um, <laughs> someone said buy Coke zero. I'll do Coke zero. Uh, any other questions? Uh, Rachel says subscribe. Sorry, it took me so long. It's okay, Rachel. Better late than never. When I Rachel, when I hit ten thousand subscribers, I feel silly mentioning this now because I can barely get a live stream going. When I hit ten thousand subscribers, I'm going to do a ten hour live stream. So I'll be here for that. Um, I think that'll happen before the end of 2020. Uh, but uh, make that happen sooner than later, and we'll, we'll, I'm going to do just like a ten hour day. I think I can do it pretty easy, Michael. I think I'm going to do. Uh, every hour, I'll take a five-minute break, and I'll, maybe I'll uh, I'll do like a an, a guest an hour will come on and chat with me. But um, you guys don't have to stay stick around for that. But it's just uh, I don't e I don't even know if that's an incentive for you to subscribe. <laughs> it's like why do you care if I do a ten-hour live stream? Anyway, um, <clears throat> what else do we have? Jen Murphy. They would never pick Tia for Bachelorette now. She's too closely connected to Colton. They want to stay far away from him. Yeah, and plus they've got what's-his-face as the next Bachelor. So, you know, they're really a year away. Year away. And television master, my man, what's happening? She was dumped by Colton, and she placed a tracker on his car. That You're saying that's what Tia did? Hey, yeah, maybe they bought, like, a Groupon of tracking devices. It's like a buy eight, get the ninth one free. Uh... I tried to buy a tracking device. I told you guys this. I tried to buy a tracking device because I kept on having someone stealing my car battery. You know, I live in Los Angeles. There's so much theft happening. And um, I wanted to buy a tracking device to see where my car battery goes because it was stolen twice. It's annoying. But the tracking device costs more than the car battery. So I was like, oh, I'm not going to buy it. Plus, it's not like in the movies where you see this tiny little tracking device. The tracking device was like pretty big and it has to have battery power, like honing. So it's like, you can't just like duck. I mean, I was like, can I duct tape that to a, you know, to a car battery. What if they see it? They're just going to take that hundred dollar tracking device and throw it out. I'm going to find it on the side of a road somewhere. So I didn't do it. Um, anyway, any other questions here? Let me see if Priscilla got back to me. Priscilla said, I take it home sometimes, especially in very egregious cases, but I manage it very well. Well, Priscilla, uh, thanks for doing that kind of work. You know, I think with a lot of people that work in law, there's, there's always like kind of uh, different avenues you can take. And I always think that people that work in family law, so, you know, like, I, I don't know too much about it, but the people that really help out family situations and fight for, fight for the victims are, are really noble, uh, people. It's, it's something, uh, I respect so much of. And, uh, thank you. And thank you for checking out. I know because of this whole weird Colt and Cassie situation that a, a lot of new random people have come into these videos. So I appreciate you sticking around and, and, uh, and sharing your wisdom with me because I sure, I'm only a Google uh, a Google search away from any knowledge whatsoever. I don't know anything about this. Um, Nikki said, I can't wait for that cold weather, snowing in SoCal, a Christmas miracle. Yeah, Nikki, I'm going to be stuck in SoCal this year. My fiance and I decided not to. Normally we go back to her parents in Kentucky and then my parents in Rhode Island. But because of the, because of the pandemic, have you heard? Uh, we're going uh, to stay close. Her parents and my parents both have some conditions that would not be good if they got the virus. So we're going to stay We're gonna stay here and we're going to, I don't know, maybe we'll get a cabin in Big Bear or maybe we'll go to Palm Springs and lay out by the pool for Christmas. I don't know what we're going to do. But we're sticking around. Let me know if there's any parties in San Diego. Um, uh, Priscilla said she also watched a lot of comedy specials and comedians. Well, hey, thanks uh, for supporting comedy. It's always good to laugh. It's a beautiful emotion. Um, I'm going to sign off. I think we talked about all we can talk about now. I sort of feel like the, the, the video quality of, quality of this was uh, an absolute disaster. Um, not much I can do about it in the short term. I'll figure out the problems. I'll keep on working on it. 
I appreciate you guys sticking around. I'll hang out for a few minutes to answer any questions. But thank you guys again so much. If anyone wants to, and again, no pressure whatsoever, but if anyone does want to donate, I'll put up the Venmo, PayPal, Cash App, and all that, Patreon, and you can uh, donate. Uh, shout out to Oz. He's a Patreon member. He always um, He's there for us. We get these extra episodes in. Um, and um, yeah, so thank you guys again so much. I'm, I'm out of here. I'll stick around the comments section. Appreciate y'all so much. Bye now. Oh, Jen, this live stream has been cursed ever since I upgraded to the pro version. More money, more problems, right? I'm blaming the election today, though. <laughs> <laughs>